This video demonstrates how to inspect and replace the suction and discharge valve assemblies on cork and compressor models 91, 291, 491, and 691. Please refer to the Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual, item IE101, for detailed information and maintenance schedule on these compressors. The IOM manual may be downloaded from Corkin's website at corkin.com. Please note these important safety tips. Periodic inspection and maintenance of the compressor is essential. Equipment installation, operation, and maintenance should only be performed by qualified personnel. All procedures must comply with the Corkin Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual, applicable local codes, and safety standards. The transfer of toxic, flammable, or explosive substances is always at the user's risk. Review the Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual before performing any maintenance procedures. Corkin vertical compressors are designed with four major components, the head, cylinder, crosshead guide, and crankcase. The head contains the discharge and suction valves. Each valve assembly consists of a valve, valve cage, valve hold down screw, valve plate and bolts, and cap. Below the head is the cylinder which contains the pistons and piston platforms. Next is the crosshead guide. On the crosshead guide is the cork and nameplate with model and serial number stamped on it. Bolted to the side of the crosshead guide are two multi-purpose compressor wrenches. They are used for removing hold down screws, adjusting packing, and removing packing barrels. At the bottom is the crankcase. Inside the crankcase is the crankshaft and oil pump. On the exterior of the left side, you'll find the oil filter, oil pressure gauge, and bearing carrier. On the right side of the crankcase, the crankshaft extends beyond the bearing cover with a flywheel attached. Replacing the valve assembly in a cork and vertical compressor requires some basic tools. An adjustable wrench, a socket or box wrench, size will vary depending on model of compressor, a small flat blade screwdriver, and the multi-purpose compressor wrench mounted on the side of the compressor. Before performing any maintenance procedures, make sure the compressor and system have been depressurized. The valve replacement is a simple procedure, so it is not necessary to remove the compressor from the piping. Keep hands, work area, tools, and parts clean. This video features the Model 691 compressor, however the procedure is the same for all of Corkin's vertical compressors. There are four steps to replacing the compressor valves. Beginning with the discharge valve assembly, remove the valve caps with an adjustable wrench. Note the O-ring on the bottom of the valve cap. Inspect and replace if necessary. Underneath the valve cap is the valve hold down screw. To remove the hold down screw, first loosen the bolts on the valve plate. Now remove the hold down screw with the multi-purpose compressor wrench. Inspect the bottom of the hold down screw and the top of the valve cage for excessive wear. Excessive wear is an indication the hold down was not properly secured prior to operation or has vibrated loose. Inspect and tighten periodically. Remove the four bolts and valve plate. Note the O-ring on the bottom of the valve plate. Inspect and replace if necessary. Repeat this procedure for the suction valve assembly. After the valve plates have been removed, remove the valve cages. The discharge and suction valve cages are interchangeable since they are the same dimensionally. Reach into the opening of the head and remove the suction valve assembly. This compressor has a SPEC-3 suction valve with a liquid relief. The suction valve specification varies according to the application. If the gasket is not attached to the suction valve assembly, reach inside and remove it from the shoulder rest. Always insert a new gasket prior to reassembly. Remove the discharge valve and gasket. Note the differences between the suction and discharge valve assemblies and label if necessary to ensure proper placement during reassembly. After both valve assemblies have been removed, Note the different types of suction valves available on cork and compressors. 
The first type is a SPEC-3 valve assembly with a liquid relief option. SPEC-3 valves are used with applications involving wet gases. The second type of suction valve is a SPEC-4. Since this valve is used in dry gas applications, it does not include the liquid relief option. Each suction and discharge valve has an inlet and outlet side and basically operates as a one-way check allowing gas flow in one direction only. It is important to identify each side before reassembly. Note the different size of the openings on each side. The inlet side has large slotted openings while the outlet side has small slotted openings. Before installation, inspect each valve assembly carefully for damage or excessive wear. Beginning with the suction valve, test the spring tension by pressing on the outer and inner valve plates with the screwdriver through the large inlet slots. Each plate should pop back immediately to a fully closed position. Repeat these steps for the inlet side of the discharge valve. To ensure the sealing integrity of the valve plates, pour a thin liquid such as rubbing alcohol into the inlet side of each valve assembly. With a properly functioning valve assembly, no liquid should pass through. This is a known bad valve with a worn seat. Notice how the liquid drips through the valve with this test. This valve assembly cannot be reused. It must be rebuilt or replaced. To rebuild the valve assemblies, new valve plates and springs are all that is required. Begin by unscrewing the valve seat. This is the inlet side of the valve with the large slotted openings. Remove the outer and inner valve plates from the valve bumper. Models 91, 291, and 491 have stainless steel valve plates. Models 691 and 891 have valve plates that are made of PEAK, a high-performance thermoplastic. Inside the bumper is the stud for the valve seat and the inner and outer valve plate springs. The bumper is the outlet side of the valve with small slotted openings. With a new set of valve plates and springs, reassemble each valve assembly. Always insert a new valve gasket before installing the valve assemblies. The gasket rests on the shoulder of the opening inside the compressor head. Next, insert each suction and discharge valve assembly. When installing the suction valve, the inlet side must face up. Conversely, on a discharge valve, the inlet side faces down when inserted into the compressor head. The discharge valve openings are typically located on the front side of the compressor, which is the side containing the cork and nameplate. Insert the valve cages into the opening of the head. Before installing the valve cover plates, make sure the O-ring is properly fitted inside the groove as shown. Torque the bolts to the specification listed in the installation, operation, and maintenance manual. Install the valve hold-down screws and firmly tighten using the multi-purpose compressor wrench which is mounted on the side of the compressor. Before installing the valve caps, make sure the o-ring is properly fitted inside the groove as shown. Torque to 25 foot-pounds as listed in the IOM manual. Please note that the o-rings may be lubricated with light oil or grease if it is allowed in the gas application. This completes the procedure for replacing the valve assemblies in all of Corkin's vertical compressors. Visit the website often for the latest technical updates and news on all of Corkin's products.